meeting way, way over yonder where we oh, oh, oh. won't have to cry no more. Oh, my Lord. We won't have to cry hey. no more. I tell you, we won't, sir. We won't what? have to cry no more. Hi, welcome to another segment of KISS. That is Keep It Simple, Sir. Sinterita, Sinora. Sisters, keep it simple. We have another great production for you today. And the house is full with some of the great creativity from our local area and community. The subject today that we selected, it would be Youth Enhancement Creativity. And today we're gonna to allow each one of the individuals to take about a minute to introduce themselves. And uh, starting with my left and your right, which will be Dr. Shirley Tucker. <laughs> and she would share briefly who she is and so forth. And once we get everyone to introduce and tell you their names, because I don't want to mess up their names. I might mispronunciate their names. So each person give your name and whatever you want to say for in a minute. When you come back to me, we'll get the show on the road and talk about the enhancement of creativity. Look at those dimples. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say for thank you for having us on your show. Um, my name is Shirley Tucker, and um, I am an artist. I recently retired from Montgomery County Juvenile Court Probation Services with 31 years of service and um, while at Juvenile Court I was the facilitator for our court's HALO program which stands for helping adolescents achieve long-term objectives as well as our Saturday group called SAG which I founded. So um, it's the collaboration between the K-12 Gallery and the Juvenile Court uh, where our youth participate in various art projects. We're known for murals, but we also do a lot of strength-based activities and this community uh, projects for the community. So it's a way, a tool for us to engage with our youth. And the youth that we have are any age from range 12 to 18. And we have some of our youth here and they've been with us in the program for a while. So being the facilitator at one point and knowing all the projects that we have done and what we continue to do, I felt it was important to have a collaboration and bring along some friends, people who have worked alongside our youth tirely hours where we've worked in a community where they've had a positive impact. So that's a connection with um, some of the other adult artists here. We have partnership on numerous projects and the key is, is that we all have a vision and a passion for young people and trying to provide an education for them and just trying to t show them the tools of creativity and, and by applying your mind what you can do if, if you have the ability to do it. So that's just basically just a brief summary of, of my point and a little bit about my background yes. and um, how, I, how all this kind of came about. So Beautiful. And we hit passing the torch. Yes, passing the yes, torch. Sir. Hi, I'm VK Elias, a uh, local artist in the Dayton area. And as Shirley mentioned, I work with her and uh, another artist, Morris Howard, and the youth uh, Halo group here in Dayton area, just collaborating on different types of projects, just to kind of empower the community and just kind of beautify the city more. Hello, I am Micah. I am one of the juniors that have joined the program and it's it's a lot of fun to be inside a program because you get to actually show what the world like you get to show the world exactly what it is you view the world as and I am sorry I'm a bit forgetful time to time That's okay. <laughs> but um it's a, this is the first time I have been here and it is a delight to be here so I hope that I don't mess up time to time. You won't. <laughs> we don't have to no mess up. We're good. Everything's great. No one has a problem. Yes, ma'am. My name is Savon Sims, and I have been in Halo since I was in fifth grade. And I really love doing Halo because I've been here when Miss Brittany was here and Miss Shirley when she was the facilitator. And so you're a veteran. Yeah, I have been here, and I'm going to be here until I'm 18. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love doing Halo. I love doing art around the city. Okay. And that's me. All right. My name is Cy Brown. Um, I'm from Columbus, Ohio. I moved down here about five years ago. 
Um, you know, I, I enjoy drawing, um, fashion, designing my own pieces like pants, custom shirts, stuff like that. And yeah, I, I recently graduated class of 2022 from Dunbar High School. Nice. Good. Good. Welcome. God bless. And I'm Morris Howard. I'm an artist here in Dayton, um, uh, creator of the Funk Mural downtown uh, at Stone Street slash uh, Land of Funk Way now. Um, this latest project uh, Shirley and I collaborated on, uh, Restart the Arts Boards of Recovery, was made possible by a grant from the Montgomery County um, Arts and Cultural District and Culture Works and uh, the Dayton Fellowship Club. And uh, Micah, Savan, and Sae uh, were very instrumental in in completing this project, and it's something that uh, Shirley and I were very proud of that. Um, as, as Savan has said, I've known Savan since she was small, so, you know, and it's, it's just been a joy watching her grow up and continue to have a passion for art. And uh, Micah is one of our Dunbar students, which is my alma mater, mm -hmm. and so is Sae, who she's recently graduated. So he's, uh, he's going to college, so. So what you're telling me, you guys are responsible for all the graffiti. <laughs> we don't do graffiti. We don't do graffiti. <laughs> but it was a beautiful job. Down there at the arcade, I don't know who did that. It reminds you of New York when you go down to the, the tank. Well, you guys don't know nothing about it. Mm -hmm. the tank. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, One thing about this is that also we have the... Um, uh, this is a DSTV Dayton Spiritual Television that my talk show is. So I always like to find something scripture as well. And I chose Ephesians 2 and 10. Uh, put my other guys on. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In other words, all these good and perfect things come from above. You know that. Mm -hmm. We just didn't all of a sudden fall off the log and say, I just want to do this. It was all something that was planted in you yeah. years before. Mm -hmm. And you realize all of a sudden, what? As you mature and grow, it comes and buds forward. Mm -hmm. Communication, myself, I've been in communication all my life because I was a paper boy. Mm -hmm. Very young age. And we didn't realize that, and later on we ended up in what? I ended up, I was a communication specialist in the military. So I'm a first radio broadcast, and I've been doing this for 37 years. Mm. But tell me, everybody, you think it just happened, right? Those things are already inborn in you. And people like Miss Shirley Tucker help bring those things, and uh, uh, Howard, and the adults around you see that beautifully and help you to bloom and flower. Now tell me a little bit more about, I know you were the juvenile system and, uh, and the, the court system and you did so many beautiful things through our city. Tell me a little bit about more what you were. Well, how it all kind of started. Um, Brittany Long, uh, who also worked for juvenile court, she actually was the one who founded the HALO program and okay. that was in 2009. So with us both being uh, at the court at the time, she brought me on board and I became her partner. So from 2009 up until, what, Morris, maybe two years ago, uh, Brittany Probably ended up taking okay. another position and then I had ended up taking over the court program HALO, which is helping out adolescents achieve long-term objectives and our Saturday Art Group SAG. But in the meantime, both artists, BK and Moores mm -hmm. had already been part of the collaboration due to the fact that the K-12 gallery uh, uh, is is a program is 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 a partnership with the juvenile court. Okay. So that's the collaboration. So for since 2009, uh, and then in 2010 we started doing the murals, and now we've done over what total over maybe 20 murals, 22 murals in the city, and and we've all had some part in it to where we've all, like Mr. Mm -hmm. Howard, just, he, he designed the, created the funk mural, uh, BK, the uh, Victory Project mural, he designed, over, what is it, Leo, is it Leo Street, Troy Street? Troy Street. Okay, yeah. Troy Street. Okay. And then there's a mural that we did, uh, was it last year, the Dayton Mall? Mm -hmm. 
that I designed, and then I also designed one inside of Dixon Church and one inside the Juvenile Justice Center. But we've all, yes. Mr. Howard BK, we've all done several murals where we've collaborated. But the key to all of this is is our network and connecting with our youth. Yes. And and this all happened, like I said, we're all under the we were all under the court. Mm -hmm. Umbrella at the time. Okay. So the thing is, is that now we have been able to, ex we've established relationships with our young people, and we wanted to take it a step further because we knew that there's many young people in the community who have the ability, they have that talent, and they have that drive. Sometimes they just need to know that there's some individuals who want, are willing to take them under their wings and guide them exactly. and direct them because we've all been in a situation where we needed someone to be there to guide us and lead us. Oh, yes. And without that, they're the future. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, it's up to us to, to continue to provide those tools, mm -hmm. to provide the tools for them. Because like we say, art is what? Problem solving. That's right. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Ho art is problem solving. That's what art is. And, and the thing is, is that we all have so much that we can do with so many negative things going on in the community. But look at all the great things that are going on. Yes. You know, we, we lived out of the tornado. Mm -hmm. The shooting in the Oregon District is on and on. But the thing is, look at all the great things that we are doing. And then the fact that we have, have been given the opportunity to continue to collaborate with young people, talented young people, mm -hmm. like the young people yeah. that we have in front of us with artists and individuals like ourselves who want to make an impact. Yes. But I know I went all around, but it started, the, it started, like I said, as far as the collaboration with Juvenile Court and the K-12 Gallery, and it just kind of went from there. Yes. So, and people contact us still all the time. Um, like Mr. Howard said, the panel project that we're mm -hmm. doing is this rotating traveling exhibit mm -hmm. that's up at Central State West, and we just had our event, what, last Friday, uh, the panel event. August 12th. Yeah, it was on August 12th. Yes. And it will rotate. It, it will go to several other venues throughout mm -hmm. Montgomery County. And, and, you know, we may expand past, past Dayton. But it's, it's just a way, you know, it's just a way to get the community involved. And it's just a way to, again, be that inspiration and be that example for our young people to let them know that we have your back and it's up to you to decide what you want to do but you're not alone yes so you have the ability but you have to want it yes. so yeah and that that creativity and i was listening to you speak art is also a form of communication mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you can be said without words you heard that saying the picture is worth a thousand, thousand words, words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you cannot say a word, you can paint and still communicate. And that's a, a, a worldwide, it's the music, it's a, a worldwide communicator. Art is also yes. something you communicate, whether you speak the language or not in that country, people can identify with what you put on the campus. Yeah. And I was just wondering, when did you know you had some talent as art, as artists? Um, I would think from, I probably didn't notice from when I was five, Okay. I used to just use clay and make things, and I just built cars or whatever like that. And then I got into elementary and just stayed here. My art teacher was a, he's this multi-talented art teacher who was funny, so I was inspired to get into painting and just be creative. The first painting I did was like a Martin Luther okay. in fifth grade. Because okay. I was inspired by my art teacher who just he was so friendly and trying to teach every student, so I wanted to be like that, yeah. basically. That's where it started from, I guess. So a mentor as well, and early, even as early as five. That's beautiful. Yes, ma'am. And when did you recognize that you had some talent and artistic skills? Well, this, the, when I found out that I had artistic skills, it was back when I actually used to live way out in Idaho. And this was when I used to take ballet. I was one day just looking up at the sky and noticed like there were so many things that I see inside the world that I view differently from others. So one day when I was, well, shouldn't have been rumbling around papers, I found some paper that I thought was blank and decided to just start drawing on it, drawing what I see the world as, which this later brought me to here to now when I started working on more bigger paintings and also the traveling murals that we recently made. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> so you identify what I'm saying. A lot of these things start a lot younger than people realize. And have somebody good for these adults to come to work with you. 
to help you bloom. A little water, mm -hmm. a little sunshine mm -hmm. that shows the beauty. Even gold in the rough. Gold don't look that great in the rough. Have you ever seen gold in the rough? <laughs> yeah. Huh? It's like dirty yeah. everywhere. It takes someone to wash it, clean it. Come on, baby, how did you get started? I got started with doing art and realizing that I wanted to do art when I was really young. I think I was like five or four. Uh -huh. And I think my mom wanted me and my sister to do something because we were getting on her nerves because we were like little kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we got paper and me and my sister decided to have a drawing competition and my sister can also draw too. She used to be in the Halo program. Yes. And so we had a drawing competition and we showed our mom and she was like, oh, they look really good. And then eventually we got older and she introduced us to the Halo program and then me and my sister got into the Halo program. Me and my sister got into the Halo program and we've been there ever since. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Beautiful, beautiful. I tell you, I, I, know, I can identify what you're talking about. And I think uh, and any parents out there, my parents always had pencils and papers and those things, musical instruments in the house. And those parents out there, if you have children, the time now is the best time when they're small. Don't wait till they get little. Yeah. Start out at a very young age. Put those things in the house. You know, uh, paper, doodle. I used to doodle a little bit. I did a little art, but even now I did charcoal and mixed media and so forth. Yeah. Little verse of some some areas. Well, my dumb button on that friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, my father got arrested, so he was an artist, so I would say it's really a God given talent. Okay. But um it goes far back to kindergarten. We were doing an assignment and it involved illustrations. So what I had drew was it was an artist performing in a concert and um my teacher they really saw the they saw my potential, they saw the talent. And um, at a young age, my um, artwork was displayed in front of the school for everyone to see. Right. So ever since then, you know, I've really been, I've just been doing art. You say, I got it. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sir, Howard. Well, I, I probably started uh, my, I don't ever remember not doing it. So I'll say probably four or five. My brother Quinn was my first model. So, and I drew it on a paper bag, so that's how, <laughs> that's, that's, that's my start, you know, that I remember. Um, and your brother uh -huh. taught me how to draw race cars in the sixth grade, okay. Tim. So, you know, uh, it's, it's been a lifelong, you know, passion. It's been a lifelong gift, you know, and uh, I was born that way, and, uh, you know, but, just because you're born with something doesn't mean that you don't need to, like no. you say, shine it up. Yeah. You know, you have to, you know, I, I, I still study. I study all the time. Yeah. You know, I, I still read books. I'm still looking at other artists, you know, because um, um, I don't spend my life in a vacuum. Right. You know, the beautiful thing I was talking to Ben Davis, and you know, he's 85, I think it's okay. He said he's still learning yeah. to do that. Art. He haven't gotten where he wants to be yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he said, oh, really? <laughs> and I had cut some suits down there, and I, I said, man, actually, I sat aside and listened. And it was almost like he was preaching. He said, because the most important thing mm -hmm. is not the art, but it's you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You and the passion yeah. that is within you that causes you to. And it may not look like what somebody else think it's supposed to look, but what you put on that canvas is what you perceive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost like writing in poetry and so forth. And they intertwine with me because I do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. You know, and in and, and writing poetry, we doodle, I mean, words. Mm -hmm. And maybe it don't make any sense, but then I have it, it's just writing. Mm -hmm. And I had one artist tell me to do the same thing in art. Yeah. Some things just yeah. the brush, learn brush, mm -hmm. brush strokes and different things that make it look like nothing. And sometimes the things you want to throw in the trash can become a masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Have you realized that? Things, uh, nobody don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the very thing everybody yeah. wants. Yeah. And then sometimes to be able to interpret to the person when you tell them what you were thinking. Because everybody has their own interpretation. Mm -hmm. They look at it and see something in you. This is something in my work that I didn't see. Mm -hmm. Oh, is that what you see? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, and and what, uh, I, I said it, I'm so happy that you're here because it's not only for our being here, because I know there's hundreds and hundreds of other young people that are in the homes 
one what they do, and they want nobody probably even gravitate and understand what they're doing. It doesn't mean anything. I don't care whether you know what I'm doing or whether you like it. For 10,000 people around you don't like it, there's another 100,000 out there mm. with love. Mm. So you don't stop what you're doing. Okay. All right, uh, I'm going to do all the talk and I get all these people together. Don't be looking at me. Like, that. come on, talk to me. <laughs> Tell me something. You got something to say. What do you think I have to say? You think I should talk about art? Yes. Hmm. There's a lot of art I like doing. I like drawing with pencils because mm -hmm. I feel like a pencil and paper is like the easiest way to draw, and anybody can pick up a piece of paper and a pencil and draw something. And I like doing realistic art with pencils and paper so that I can show everybody else that if they have a piece of paper and a pencil, mm -hmm. they can do that same thing. Yes. So I like doing that, and I like what she said about how you, when you do art, mm -hmm. you're showing the world what you see yes. and how you see the world. Mm -hmm. And I really like that. Yes. Start off with stick men, huh? <laughs> <laughs> then put some meat on the bone. <laughs> <laughs> then some, put some clothes on them. Oh, you know, it's, it, it's so beautiful. And it's something, uh, uh, when you have a passion for these things, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make any difference whether anybody else like it or not because this is you expressing yourself, as I said again, in communicating. Mm -hmm. All right? And you do picture taking. Yeah. That's I'm um, actually I started with sticks, believe it or not. Okay. Because I was good at building and molding things mm -hmm. like this with clay. Yeah. That's about it. But drawing it, mm -hmm. it was never me. So when I was inspired by my fifth grade art teacher, I went home and started tracing first. Because yeah. there was a Superman. We always had the magazine Superman, so I traced that. Then I'm like, okay, let me try to do it by looking at it. It came out terrible. <laughs> I didn't give up though, but I was persistent, so I did it over and over until I got it, uh, the mm -hmm. same exact image. After that, I just kept trying different pictures. If I'm, if it's difficult, I would trace it first so I can kind of get the concept of it and then try to do it myself. Yeah. That's how I started from stick to doing figures, and then now I'm doing murals in the city mm -hmm. with great artists and youth like this. Yeah. So. So don't give up. No. Nope. Yeah. It's just Try. the time that you put into it. Yes. Because you say you might be interested in, in something, but do you have the time to put into it? Uh, so. Yes, just put your time in. No pain, no gain. Huh? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you got, to, you got to go with it. What other mediums did you use? I know you do the murals, and you did a bit of uh, drawing, and charcoal, and maybe, what, oils, and... Acrylics, yeah. watercolor. Mm -hmm. Watercolors. Yeah. I That's actually fun one. want to get into watercolor. Like, I've been using a lot of watercolor recently because mm. I really like watercolor, and there's so much you can do with watercolor. Yes. So I've really been getting into watercolor. Yes. How about ink? I used to do the ink wars. You used to do the ink yeah, wars. I love it. Man, that. that's interesting, isn't it? Yes. How you that's what I'm curious about. I yes. actually wondered how that works because I wanted, I wanted to try that out, but at the same time, I'm, like, so scared that I might just end up in my whole room covered with ink or something like that. I mean, yes, it's already covered with acrylic paint, sorry mom, but <laughs> I was actually curious about how that actually works, which is something that I still need to research about. Yes, 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 yes. I know we do morals, but I, what, what else, see, art is like I said, communicates so many different areas mm -hmm. that you can venture out into. Anybody did charcoal? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Goofs around a bit now and then. Uh, Ceramics, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ceramics, definitely. Oh, yes, yes. So many forms of art that we communicate to the uh, public. You know, I was just thinking I had class, art class, don't you? <laughs> and I was late, a lot of times I'm late, and I went to art class, and the door was closed and locked, and they had paper over the door. And I went into the classroom, and when I went to the classroom, everybody's was on me. There was two new figures <laughs> in the classroom. They didn't have that in the curriculum. Everybody was shocked. I'm like, yeah. man, have you done much bigger? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a yeah. Figure. I have. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to that, yeah. it's either like I'm trying to draw the proportions just right and I see it, either it's correct or it's just like, 
Oh dear, you might have fallen into the abstract category again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I'm basically a physic figurative artist. And yeah, so, that's, um, that's abortions are you know, that's, a nightmare. That's my strong suit. Um, and I'm still working on it. I said I came out that way. People's faces were always fascinating to me, and then just the uh, the experience of you know the the human experience, yes. and you know it still fascinates me today. Um, and uh, I very rarely do any art that doesn't have people in it. Okay. True. You know? Yeah, same so here. That's, I, that's just that connection yes. that I feel. Yes, and, and that's where we come from. Yeah. We come from where we are. Yeah. And that's our expression. Everybody don't do face, everybody don't do figures. And then you said did cards, and mm -hmm. some people are great at doing animals, and yeah. you know. It's such a variety because we have so many a mixed people, a world out there, mm -hmm. a diverse world mm -hmm. that you can appeal to whatever you. Well, what you but you know, it's interesting, mm -hmm. but we're, we're different, but the diversity is there, but then we think alike. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Even the murals and a lot of the art projects that we've done, mm -hmm. even though they're all different in their creative styles, some type of way we all have a, a connection mm -hmm. to where some of the same elements are in those paintings or, or murals or whatever is still a connection the way our our, 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 our creativity thinks. Yes. Yes. Well, you know, B, BK and I, we used to work together, we used to teach together at, mm -hmm. a, at, a, at a juvenile facility and, you know, BK is, is very creative and um, I'm pretty much, you know, I'm pretty much <laughs> drawing, painting, he's, he's, you know, he's into a lot of things and it kept us having that balance with the kids, it kept it kept things, you know, from being mundane and stale and, and boring. And you know, the the, the, the thing about um, I love all sorts of art. So just because I don't do other forms of art doesn't mean that I don't appreciate it and I don't love it. You know, it's just that I do what I do, yes. but I appreciate what other people do because the thing is, is that, like you said, this is a big world, man, and I look at art from all over the yes. world, yep. and it's it's just very fascinating. If everybody was like me, I yeah. mean, you know, that would be okay, but it wouldn't <laughs> be, you know, you wouldn't get that inspiration right. that you would, you know, that I get now from just looking at also because I'm fascinated how people think, yes. and yeah. you know, and one of the other things about art is how you think, and Savon said it is how you think, yes. you know, um, and if you can get that message across, then you've succeeded in, you know, in, in you know, in what you were trying to do, and so. Um, we all have our different methods and this latest project that we have, you know, you can see the diversity because what Shirley and I decided is that, you know, for once, instead of us doing the designs and then having them, you know, duplicate what, what we designed, we let them come up with their own designs, with their, you know, from beginning to end and, and it turned out beautiful. Yeah. And, and, you know, yeah, it was. It was. So we we want to certainly invite and encourage everyone in the community to take time out and mm -hmm. and um, you know find out where some of the you know where the panel exhibits will be rotating because right now mm -hmm. it is at C, they're at CSU West on Germantown. Okay. But you know, like Morris was just saying, I mean, it's just phenomenal, just the range of creativity. Okay. And um, I love acrylic oil. That's okay. my specialty, and mm -hmm. I love bright colors. I love working with colors. Um, to, to me, art tells a story, yes. and um, that's along with a lot of the, you know, a lot of the murals and stuff that we've yes. done. Yes. Um, that's that's what it, it tells a story, and it just gives us all a purpose, and okay. just working together, and then just connecting with one another. And if you look over the city, and if you see all the different murals that we've done, we're not the only ones, of course, in Dayton, we've done the murals, but the fact is, is that the uniqueness about the majority, I believe, the murals that we've done, it has been working, partnershiping with young people, yes. and that, and 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 that's where we stand out because of that relationships that we're building mm -hmm. with creative young people, and those tools that we're giving them, and the fact that we're allowing them to explore their creativity, and then you're bringing the community together. Yes. So you know, we're we're you know, if, if you want a mural or you, <laughs> you want something done. Yes reach out to us, yes. you know, and, you know, reach out to us and 
you know, it's just, just a great experience, you know, and, and, and it gives these young people, yeah. gives them a chance to give back to the community as well. Yeah. Because that's a lot that we don't, we can always give back in more ways than doing art. Yeah. There's a need right now. And right now, we have the tools and so many other people have the platform mm -hmm. and the tools to do that. We need for everybody to come together, but it can be done. So. But then also, doesn't one work complement another? Even, it's like a puzzle to even, you know, uh, you guys are talking about working together. I don't know if you know the Stivers the School of School yes. Art. And sometimes I, on the graduation, I would go, and the, the, the seniors mm -hmm. they have a big canvas on the stage. Mm -hmm. And all these young people began together and put that mirror together right there wow. while we're watching. They didn't get a chance to watch that. Wow. Wow. If interested, during their graduation, they come together and just put that big mirror while the audience and the band is playing and so basically. It all has to do with what you're saying, being able to work together. Mm -hmm. Art, communicating, music, mm -hmm. all of these things give us that thing, that the cohesiveness of loving what you're doing and sharing. Yeah. We all look different. I would feel pretty crazy if we all look like me here. <laughs> I mean, you know, I like to be a little different, especially don't you? Yes. And you enjoy who you are. And I think you had this um, uh, board, I know we had it up earlier, uh, the different places, that, the location. This one I've seen. Now this is on William Street. Now James Pate is the lead artist who designed this Halo mural, but uh, our, our youth and, um, and uh, the other artists uh, involved, we collaborate, and again, it's some of the same artists, you know, and then that's that, that's that time connection because we, we all collaborate. And then this is the funk mural that Mr. Howard uh -huh. designed. And then oh, myself and awesome. Brittany Long and, yeah. and BK, he that. might have painted. We had so Simi and we had so many other artists mm -hmm. that also uh, collaborated on this project. And then these are some of the, the youth. We used to have a partnership with the uh, uh, Youth Works uh, at the Job Center. And Halo was a youth work site. So during the summers, we would have youth that would work with us that way mm -hmm. uh, throughout the community on the murals. And then this is inside of Dixie United Methodist Church. So this is one of the murals that I designed, and then this is the Date Mall mural that I designed, and, and then the this center. is yeah. yes, in the center, and then this is the one, the BK, the Victory Project on Troy Street, mm -hmm. and again, all these murals have all been connecting with young people, where they have all took part in, in painting right. every brush stroke they've had a part in it. All right. So, all right. yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And that's just one that is, we have we have over twenty. So yeah, this is yeah, just, yeah. this is just a small portion of what we've yeah. done. So yeah, we have several. So. But but then again, like you say, you are working and giving back to the community, and you're also looking for others that maybe have an interest to join and do some of the same things that you guys are doing. Again, how do you still get in touch with you? Well, I, um, I can. Uh, hit, Give me your information or your contact information. Mm -hmm. um, my email would be srtucker15 at gmail.com, mobile 937-397-5563. Okay. So that would be a way you can get in contact with okay. me. Okay. Being so. able to get in the yes. different areas in the yes. city that yes. might have more. Yeah, so them. people reach out to us all the time. Yes. Um, and, you know, or they may call around to check to see how they can get in contact uh, with us. So, and like I said, with, with our collaboration with the uh, panel project that we just did, you know, so it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of opportunities and people hear about what's going on so they can get in contact with any of us. And like I said, we're, you know, it would be a great partnership, especially uh, keeping the community involved. It's still yeah. another way of networking, so. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I went to look at the mural day and went there and got me some tacos, shrimp tacos at the yeah. beautiful building, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she went, she went out to lunch. I thought she going to be lost her. <laughs> but, but you know, uh, it's a beauty in being able to see the things that are, are, are servicing in Dink. Because some of us, some of the young has been around, we see something that we may have wanted to see years a ghost come mm -hmm. to be in. Yes. You had a very blessed time when you can outreach mm -hmm. and you can do things that we didn't have the privilege to do. Yeah. And those young people out there that are talented, they might not have an education background and art, you were talking about they are also welcome. Is that something you have classes for them? Or when they come together, they just say, okay, join in and work or? Morris. 
Right. What would the young people that may be interested in the community of joining doing something with you all? Well, you know, um, um, speaking on the, our, you know, our latest project um, that restarts the arts uh, uh, project, uh, when we um, when we uh, got these, you know, young people together, um, and I don't remember one day, but it was one day early. I'll say maybe our third, or maybe fourth week, and I, and I looked at Shirley, and Shirley kind of looked at me, and we were like, you know, I don't know. We kind of had a, the same thought at the same time that, you know, it's not like I'm looking to go anywhere anytime soon. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to check out yet, Bishop, but, but. We realize we're not going to be here forever, yeah. and right. you know, and you know, um, these young people are, you know, they're our future, and um, I'm not passing them my torch. I'm lighting their torch, yes. so that they can continue to, um, you know, work things on, their, work things out on their own, and and you know, this is um, what it's all about. It's about. Um, building a legacy yes and you know so that when we're you know when we're you know gone or no longer able to 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 get around and do the things that that we're doing now that someone else is carrying that on mm -hmm. and uh, making it possible for some for someone after them yes and you know that's that's what's important uh, to me because art is a art is a solitary occupation yes and to you know, come out of our shells, you know, to all get together uh -huh. to work on something. It's, a, it's, it's really a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. it, yes. it really is because, uh, uh, you know, uh, when I was young, I, I, I guarded my art. I spent most of my time, you know, drawing, you know, and painting by myself. Yes. And so uh, that continued up until, uh, the funk mural when that Shirley um, uh, collaborated with me on, uh, along with uh, Brittany Long, uh, who we mentioned earlier, and BK, um, the it was it was it was a weird situation for me because that was my first time like really having all these people involved. I'm looking at these kids right, and I'm like. <laughs> you know, I'm about to they don't have a couple of heart attacks and you know <laughs> and a stroke. But you know, I let go. You know, I, I let go and I let God and, and I let them. You yeah. know, and so it, it, it turned out it turned out great. And so, you know, I'm just letting everybody know it hasn't been that long that I came out of my shell. All right. So, you know, it's it's, uh, but it's it's very rewarding because um, we're you know it's about sharing and, and caring. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a Pauline favorite, and Paul always said, "I Paul planted, Apollo's rock water, God gave the increase, <laughs> yes. and the increase had to come in." I started not to say anything, but I did prison ministry for a long, long time. Okay. And what bothered me so much, there's so much talent locked up mm -hmm. in prisons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And some of the young men and some that write, when they would write me, I would look at the letter, they would have that letter so beautifully designed. And I'm saying, all of this gift, all of this is locked away. When it needs to be added and shared to the world, that thank God you guys are sharing it. And getting got to a public communicating. Mm -hmm. Sharing a little bit of yourself. A lot of my babies that come home again, they and they visit and they feel my babies every they come up with young people. I call my babies about that baby Michael Jackson. I don't know what he was thinking about, but the man in the mirror. Mm -hmm. And you are showing yourself through your art, which mirrors your insert. Mm -hmm. I don't stop, I'm a preacher, I just can't help myself. <laughs> but I just thought I just love because it's so much that we have, and so yeah. much that I reach, and hope that others, from looking at you and listening to the production, yeah. knowing there is something yeah. else that we can do. Yeah. And right here in Ohio, I hear some people say, I'm bored, there's nothing to do in Dane. You hear that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I had a, a, a friend of ours recently come from Florida, moved here today. She said, I don't know what they're talking about. There's so many things you do in Dane. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's so much to talk about. Ohio is boring. 
they, and there's nothing going on in barring. I don't know my peers and the youth, they're like, they're moving out, but I see potential in Dayton, okay? Because Dayton used to be the city of eloquence. I don't know if you guys look into the archives and the yeah. library, but all types of businesses come here in Dayton. Yes. Dayton used to be the richest mm. city. Yes. So and I believe it can become like that again, and I want to grow with it. Yes. That's why I believe in it. So. And, and you know, believe it or not, I almost said I'm part of the You get older, you look back, you, you feel that way. Oh. <laughs> to see the development, let me tell you something. Dayton, we always call the gym city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whether you realize it or not, yeah. Dayton is the gym city. You could go to Europe and run to somebody been in Dayton. Mm -hmm. And then you say, what? Dayton is such a small, one of the smallest cities in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you can go to coast to coast, and I guarantee you, you'll find somebody mm -hmm. to tell you something about Dayton. Dayton has been very innovative. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, mm -hmm. it's unlimited. And I look at it, and I say, well, you know something? The Gym City has many carrots. You know what a carrot is, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And art is upon one of those carrots that is in Dayton. You are a part of a great legacy. And you said, if you do your history and study, yeah. there are so many things that come out of Dayton. Dayton is really a great yes. city. I'm glad to be a part of Dayton. But people look at it negatively yeah. because they, you have to put something into it to get something out of it, right? Yes. Yeah. yes. You have to be yes. involved. Yes. And I thank God for each one of you because you seem like you want to be involved mm -hmm. and to make a difference. Because you may be sitting, oh, eventually, like you said, they'll be sitting where we mm -hmm. are today. It don't take long, believe me. Well, you know, I have. Were you 21 years old last year? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm 22. I'm 22. <laughs> I, I turned 22 to my last birthday. But actually, I'm saying that's how time, that's how time goes, isn't it? You yeah. think I got a long time to do this, I got a long yeah. time to do that. And before you know it, speak loud, mm -hmm. speak up, mm -hmm. like your art. Mm -hmm. Speak up, because I don't want to edit and raise your voice up. Speak up! <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I was just um, sitting here and, um, you know, people, I didn't do anything by myself. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I've, I've done a lot of work by myself, but I didn't you know, come into, you know, uh, being by myself. And um, I still have uh, mentors like Bean um, and uh, a man that lives in um, uh, Silver Springs, Maryland, uh, Mr. Simi Knox, uh, who's, I think Mr. Knox is gonna be 87 this month. And he's still painting. He's a wonderful uh, African-American uh, portrait painter that um, I can call him, and he's going. He answers the phone, and we talk. And he's, you know, we've been doing this for years and years. And you know, so um, I have to give back because you know, people people give give to me. Yes. And so you know, uh, Mr. Knox has been doing that. And Mr. Knox is the first um, African American artist to paint a sitting president when he painted uh, Bill Clinton and, mm -hmm. and also oh. First Lady Hillary Clinton. Oh, wow. so, uh, That's amazing. And so, you know, if he can, where he is, and he can take the time to answer my phone call, I can certainly wow. be out here trying to help someone else. Mm -hmm. nice. yes. And those people that are successful are those willing to help others. Mm -hmm. I know I'm mixing up the conversations and so forth, but I, I don't know whether she ever sees the program or not, but uh, Linda Adams, Mm -hmm. was such a giving person. We sit there and laugh like we're talking. I mean, you know, but she gave so much of herself. So yeah, she up there now, but she did something before she got there. Mm -hmm. And it means something to be able to give, mm -hmm. to give back. Well, eventually, yeah, money would come in there because we are going to have income, but that shouldn't be the focal point. Mm -hmm. The focal point is sharing mm -hmm. that special gift with someone else. And what's for you, you're going to get, it's going to come your way. Yes. Mm -hmm. But the important thing that you love it so much from your heart mm -hmm. that you're willing to share. Mm -hmm. I got identified with a lot of things with you guys. Uh, you talking about Dunbar? I went to Dunbar. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I had just moved down here uh -huh. um, my freshman year. And um, it was really a big adjustment. But Dunbar has really done a lot for me. Um, I feel like the teachers there, you know, I thanked them. They seen a lot of potential in me that I didn't see as far as art and poetry and everything else. 
Okay. Yes. And that's a good thing. Yes, ma'am. And if I may add on to that, being at Dunbar, even though I'm a junior soon, I'm going to be a senior, still super nervous about that. The teachers there, they actually spot whenever there's potential inside of a student and they are willing to help out. Mm -hmm. And like, it's really nice because there's not really, like now and then whenever I'm walking around downtown, I don't really see that many people out there in the world that wants to help others when it doesn't really hurt to do that, but also actually is a good thing. Like me, I'm mostly the, if you need something, I'm right here, I'm glad to help you out person because there's, I find it nice to actually help out other people and it also helps calm me down as well. Like whenever I see my friends upset, I'm always like, hey, do you need a hug? Come here, I'm right here. I'm going to be your support person because you need it. And also you help me out too because that's just, that is teamwork right there as well. <laughs> but. It's nice to actually help out yes. because there's someday you're going to meet them again in the future and like if you do need help, they're actually willing to help you out because they know all the things that you helped them out with in the past and that's actually a nice thing to do, like a nice thing to have happen to you that has happened recently, but I actually cried a bit because of it. It was really nice that they helped me out, but... It's nice to be able to help out inside the world and be there for others if they do need help and assistance. It seems like you've got a little pastoral spirit in you. Mm. Yeah. That, that's a caring, that caring, that's a caring spirit. And you're right. When we give and we reach out, it always comes back. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the way you expect, but it always is blessed. Even I look at negative things in the world. Mm -hmm. Doesn't negative things sometimes have your heart? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everything's not positive that inspire you, is it? Not yes, sir, you got a thought there. <laughs> I'm disagreeing. I'm disagreeing. <laughs> yeah, I'm disagreeing with your saying. <laughs> but but that, that, that's interesting. And what would you say to someone out there that might be listening, uh, a young person, what would you say when they feel a little rejected? You know, I don't know how many times you took your person and throw it in the trash can, but I think we all go through that, don't we? Uh -huh. Even writing you. Uh, or just scrap the whole thing and then rewrite it. <laughs> right. Trying to more times. Again. Yeah, <laughs> I do. I tend to do that a lot since I also work on writing scripts as well. But what I would say to someone that needs like that support, that push to help them continue on, I would say don't be so hard on yourself because I I was I cannot lie, I was difficult. I'm difficult on myself sometimes. Just like no, you're not doing this right or this is terrible. You need to stop doing this. But then there's always that other mindset inside of my head where it's like, hey, it's all right. You got this. Just calm down and breathe. It's all right. What I would say to them is one, don't be hard on yourself because that will mess you up if you're doing that too much. Two. Take some deep breaths and focus on something good, something nice and relaxing, or something nice like a memory that you really enjoyed, or maybe perhaps the first time you met someone that you really like, for example. Uh, <laughs> he's unfortunately not able to join us today, but my love that actually helped out with the mural, uh, the mural sorry, my English has went out the window. <laughs> It was actually really nice to paint with him, and we might have forgot to tell him which direction the canvas was going, but it turned out really cool in the end. <laughs> I still I still apologize about that. I still apologize to this day. But like the first time like I encountered him, there was that like that sudden snap, that realization like they're actually a really good person. This is someone that you can actually like trust and not feel bad about being yourself around, which is actually really nice. I always try my best to be myself, but like if it's someone that's like, oh, you're not really a good person, I have to isolate myself away from them just to keep myself from absorbing all that negative energy, if that mm. makes sense, yeah. Yeah. which that's something you should never do. If you encounter someone that's really bad, like someone that's rude all the time and doesn't understand or like, like a, uh, sorry, sometimes words are difficult to come to me. Um, or someone that doesn't respect your boundaries, don't don't let them control you or 
Like, don't let them control you, try to affect your life. Simply push yourself away from the person, even if it's difficult to do. Keep that away from you because it will make your life a lot better if you cut yourself off for that person that does not do well for you. So keep yourself surrounded with people that are good, people that come off with positive energy and cheerful energy because that will help you out in the future and then you'll know that you can like you can be yourself around them instead of feeling like you're trapped inside of a box 24-7. Yeah, yeah, mean positive, yeah. Okay, yes, baby, go ahead, tell me about it. Talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> what I would say to people who the need another push is to keep it's going, everything. like keep doing what you like to do, no matter mm -hmm. like what anyone says, because I know there is a lot of negative energy, like she said, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of negative people that will tell you to stop mm -hmm. if like, if what you're doing is not helping them out. Mm -hmm. But I would say to try and help yourself out, be positive to yourself, and keep going. Like, it may take a very long time, but I feel like if you keep doing something and keep going, you can get to where you want to be. And look at the testimony. You all look at the testimony of those who have been successful. I was thinking about Tyler Perry. Mm -hmm. All the negative, mm -hmm. all the over all the negative things, where they come from. Check out the background. Every, it didn't come overnight. No. Mm -hmm. You go through some things, but you keep on, keep on. And when, when, when Obama became president, his slogan the whole time was, yes, we can. Mm -hmm. And that's the attitude that we have to have. Yes, we can. It doesn't seem, it was so many negative things. Those faceless men, even in our day and time. But there are, we call it skyscrapers, mm -hmm. that you can emulate, and you are our future skyscrapers, aren't there? Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Talk to me, <laughs> got a minute to go um, I would just tell people, um, you know, be you. Um, if you feel like you're voiceless in this world, find, some, find you a way to express yourself, whether it's art, or it can be some, some, something else, you know? Um, art is versatile. It's not just, you know, pen and paper. You know, it may be music, fashion, mm -hmm. you know? Find you something that make you happy and just express yourself. Yes, yes, that, that, I remember all saying, express yourself. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> you don't know the man, don't you? I know well, that song too, so like. You know that song too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what it's all about, expressing yourself, sharing with the world who you are. And like you said, you don't have to drown into the negativeness. Mm -hmm. There's too many positive things out there. And there's so many positive things just waiting for you. You've seen those flowers, look bud, mm -hmm. and you wait for it to open up. Yeah. That's the... It was all worth it in awesome. the end, was it? Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm thankful to you, gentlemen, that you're working with the young people, because I take a special person. Congratulations. Thank you. And we see the fruit already in work, right? And one day they'll come back, you know, they maybe have to push your wheelchair. No. <laughs> but sometimes we don't look at the beauty. Sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm you angry. Can't you. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> sometimes we put the party. Okay, I'll this good. Until we wait until we get older before we can really appreciate yeah. the things that are around us. But you are being able to look around you and interact and also to share yes. with what you see in your environment and surrounding. Mm. And yes, ma'am, Dr. Tucker, talk to you. <laughs> it's about service. Yes. You know, and, that, and that's what sticks in my mind, you know, and that, that's why, you know, people ask you, why do you do what you do? You know, like I said, we all have a, a passion, we all have a vision, we all have the ability to make a difference. And for me, it's service. And, and that's one of the greatest things that I accomplished. I feel uh, working at the court like I did and it's just being introduced to the HALO program and then having the opportunity to create the Saturday Art Group SAG. It gave me the opportunity to really reach young people yes. and even though it started off as art, it became a learning tool and it gave me a chance to expose them and guide them and just encourage them and, and just let them know that the sky is the limit. So I'm, I'm more on service. And so I find myself using art as a tool for service because it can reach so many people in so many different ways. Oh, yes. So um, I would just encourage, you know, all of us in the community to just, what is it that you can do? What is it that we all have a talent? We all have a gift. We all have something that we enjoy doing. What is it that you can do that can make a difference in someone else's life? What can you take the time to do 
to help someone else. That's right. So yeah. Yeah. and reach out and touch my heart. Yeah. Just right. believe it or not, there's so many negative ways. And I one said because you don't know what I'm talking about name. I told you I did prison ministry, right? Mm -hmm. It's a young lady called me from every now and then, asked me to pray with her. She's been in there 27 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then start out that way, but it's continued. But these are what you do, and and what you do is really doing something great in, in forming a grassroots. Yes. You may not see it right now, but in the end, you'll be able to thank these people that are coming to your life to share what they are sharing with you. And I'm looking forward to when I get 102 that you guys can come <laughs> <laughs> and do a little of me or something. You know, if life shouldn't be so hard all the time. See, like if you're a bishop, y'all, if they always ask me, I'm different. My title has nothing to do with my work. We're individuals. Right. We express ourselves. Don't let nobody put you in a box mm -hmm. and put a title on you of what you can't do. Right. The sky is the limit. And we had a couple minutes ago. But yes. All right. Is it okay if I add to that? Pardon? Is it okay if I add on to that? Add on? Mm -hmm. Yes. And like like with the title thing. Yes. Just because just because like Let's say, for example, there's that one person in school that's like super popular, and then they're like acting all rude. <laughs> just because, just because you're popular does not mean that you should be acting that way. But also, it doesn't really make you like super like. How do I how do I explain that? Um, the word's not getting to me right now. That's but okay. for example, okay. like. Well, not an example, sorry. But a title shouldn't make, like, have people view you in that way. People should view you for how, like, how you actually are, like, your true self. Yes. Instead of this title that just looms over your head or fashionista. Thank mm -hmm. you, Dr. Henry. <laughs> 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 but they should see you for who you actually are instead of, like, what other people say that you are. You should be able to be yourself and like have others be like, oh, hey, that's so-and-so. They're actually really friendly. Or that's so-and-so. They are super creative. And if you want something from them, please talk to them because they will gladly help you out. Like you should be able to have trust in that person and also understand who they truly are as well. And even if they don't, mm -hmm. keep on being who you are. Mm -hmm. Because we are not geared by the peer pressure we are geared by who we are from the inside out and shine out. But even or not, our time is over. Okay. We have already completed over 55 minutes. I hope you enjoyed Thank yourself. You. Thank, Thank you. We'd like to thank each one of you. And perhaps to come again so another time. It's so hard to get into this stuff. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. Talk about it. I get an answer. So do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> we put another number on the phone. We need to get it done. God bless you. Thank 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 you. God bless you. Thank you. Have a blessed day. Until the next production. Say,